I live in a very pretty city in the heart of the Alps. It's a Grenoble. I'm surrounded by the mountains. I have great landscape and great view. It's spring. It's getting warm. So every morning I wake up, I work out, I do some running. And it seems at this moment that my day starts very well and everything is going to be fine. Well, that, unfortunately, that doesn't last long. I check my emails and I see there are plenty of notifications asking me to review some people uh, per request and other notifications uh, giving me feedback about some pull requests I have submitted a few days ago. At this moment, actually, it seems that my day is not going to be fine and there is a drama about to start. Well, hi everyone. My name is Maha. I am an engineering manager at Julius Mac. I worked before that as a DevOps engineer, and I also have a PhD in optimizing performance in multi-tier distributed system deployed in a private cloud. And today I'm going to walk you through a drama-free code review process. How can we save our day from this drama while we are reviewing pull requests submitted by other people or getting reviews from other people about what we have submitted? I believe that most of you, if not all of you, daily you implement some code and you create a pull request, you submit this pull request, asking some people in the team to review what you have done, asking their feedback and their opinion about what you have done. Or you, you have been asked to review other uh, teammates about what they have done and uh, what, what they have submitted in their pull request. At this moment, so we can see that the code review process has two folds. The first one is creating and submitting a pull request, and the second one is reviewing a pull request. Let's have a look at this small piece of code. So first of all, let me ask you how many of you develop some Python? Please raise your hand. Okay, there are a few people. That's great. Moreover, regardless the programming language, so this small function actually converts a list to a string. And if you ask me my opinion about this piece of code, I'm going to start by looking at the variables. So we have variables that are, they don't have meaningful names, so they should have meaningful names. The second variable actually doesn't follow the naming convention in Python, which we are supposed to use a lowercase while, you, while you, we are naming variables. And my last comment will be about using the join function. Well, actually, this piece of code is not going to work if I have an input where the list contains both strings and integers. So this work is not this code is not going to work. So as you can see here, for those two three lines of code, I was able to give different opinion about some mistakes in that code. Some case co corner cases are not covered by this code. So basically what I have done, I give my opinion based on my experience and I reviewed that code. As I mentioned earlier that the code review process has two folds. The first one is creating and submitting a pull request. Me as an author developer, I want to submit my pull request asking people to review it. I should keep a few things in mind. The first one is when I submit a pull request, I should provide the summary describing my goal from this pull request. And really that's very helpful because it will give the reviewer a context, what I'm trying to do, what's the goal. So he will understand what I'm trying to do, then he will give me the proper feedback. The second point is very important, which is adding the right people to review this pull request. And answering that, question actually is depending on what you are trying to achieve. For example, if I'm trying to solve some performance issues in my code, in my pull request, then I should add people who are really experienced in, in performance. If I'm trying to solve some security holes, then I should ask people who are experts in, in security. 
Of course, you should keep in mind one thing that if we are working, for example, in a microservice architecture and I'm developing uh, some features in specific components and I know there are other people developing in the same components, so they are impacted by my code, I should add those people as well. So everybody is impacting by my code should be aware of what I'm doing and should be reviewing my pull request. The third point is very important is before submitting any pull request, we should make sure that it complies with what we call a PR checklist. I'm going to uh, talk about uh, the pull request checklist pull request in, uh, in more details in the coming slides. But as an example, I should make sure that the new code has unit tests and it passes all those tests also doesn't break any existing test. That's very important. So this is one of the examples uh, of what we should comply in the uh, PR checklist before submitting this, check uh, this pull request. Well, last but not least, we should have the mindset that we accept any feedback. And this is very important. As an author, as a developer, when I criticize your code, that doesn't mean I'm criticizing you. So your code doesn't represent who you are. So this is really very important mindset, very important rule. I would say it's a golden rule, and this will save a lot of a drama in the team. The second part of the code review process is reviewing the pull request as itself, and me, I'm playing the role of a reviewer. So me as a reviewer, I should start by having a big picture of the pull request, trying to understand what's going on and what's the goal from this pull request. And thank you for your uh, summary, your description. You are telling me what's the goal and what you are trying to achieve. So I will be able to give you uh, the proper feedback. The second point, if there is ambiguity in any pull request, and this might happen because as a reviewer and as a developer, we don't have the same contest. Uh, context and those to solve any ambiguity, any any clear points, we should ask a questions. Well, actually, here there is another sub uh, point, which is when I'm writing my review, my comment to the uh, author, I should also it's more appropriate if I shape it in a question form. For example, there is in this pull request a variable named ID. And to me as a reviewer, it seems it's meaningless. It doesn't really have the, the right or the meaningful names. And supposed to be, for example, customer ID. So instead of saying, rename this variable to be from ID to be customer ID, it would be much nicer, more acceptable, and more recommended to see why don't you use customer ID? It's more meaningful. Last but not least, as a reviewer, try to find something positive in the pull request. Our goal from pull request or code review, reviewing a pull request is not always about finding bugs or mistakes, as I've done earlier. I tried to, I was picky, I was trying, okay, this is not, doesn't follow the naming convention. This doesn't work, there is this is special case, etc. That's correct, but it's not only about that of finding bugs. Also, it's about highlighting positive things in the, in the pull request, because the, the, the author, the developer, spent a few days, probably a few weeks, implementing this functionality. So we should really appreciate his job, and that will really will motivate the developers to keep moving on and, and improving their code. Let's dig more deeply on how can we implement an efficient uh, code review process and prior any code review process as a team, we are developers, we will play the roles of a reviewers or an author, we should answer a few questions. The first one is why we are doing code review. I believe that most developers think that code review is a waste of time. As long as I'm implementing my functionalities, I'm writing unit tests, and the code passes the test, and everything looks fine and works well, then why really I'm wasting my time by doing code review? Why don't I merge with the main branch and we move on? Well, actually, that's not true, because the goal is not only to find 
issues in the code. We want to guarantee the quality of the code and then the overall quality of our software because this software is going to be in production. So we don't want to have surprises while we are running the code in, in production. We want also to share knowledge. So I'm implementing some functionalities and I'm so proud of it. So I would like to share it with the other. So we learn from each other. So that's really very important point to know before starting any code review process. The second question is when? And this question actually has two sub questions. The first one is when I should implement that code review? Is it during the implementation? Which means that we can do pair programming and then I can get uh, incremental feedback and I can improve my code. Or it's when I'm done with my implementation and I check the test pass and I submit asking for, for, for feedback. The second uh, sub question of this uh, when a question is when should I consider that the pull request is complete? Is it when all issues raised by the reviewers are solved, are addressed, or when everybody, all the reviewers agrees that this code is fine and can be merged to the main branch? The third question is who? Who's going to be involved in this process? And that really depends on your goal from the pull request. We know that tech lead, our ticket lead, uh, senior developers are really good at reading complex code and they are good at giving us feedback and pointing the mistakes or the problem in our code and if there are some uh, corner cases are not covered by our code. However, if my goal is to see how simple my code is, is it readable? Is it reusable? Actually, junior people are perfect fit for that job. So include junior people in the uh, code review. Then we need to answer the question about where. And here I'm referring to the physical place where we want to implement the code review. It can be, as I mentioned earlier, pair programming, which means we are two developers, we can, or more, we sit together, we, we check how we implement this code together, I give you feedback incrementally and so on. And that's really efficient when you have big pull request. Uh, second part can be actually by using some softwares de de dedicated for code review, like Bitbucket or uh, GitLab, GitHub, etc. It can be by organizing video call. It can be if the pull request is small, I can check it out locally to my environment, run it, and write my review back to the author. So that really depends on the size of the pull request and what you are trying to achieve. Here, the very important question, and is it about, it's about what we are trying to look for when we are doing code review. Here is a story. So when I joined my company, my manager asked me, hey Maha, can you review this code? And then I asked him back, okay, what I'm supposed to look at exactly? Then he said, make sure it's fine. Well, whatever it's the fine means, so what I did, uh, I looked at the code, I start, okay, there is no test unit. There is no, um, this code properly doesn't follow the name and convention of the variables, the size of the methods, the name of the methods, etc. So as you can see, what I did actually, I give my personal opinion about that code based on my experience or what we can see like how I really would like to implement it if you ask me to do it. So basically what I did, it was purely subjective based on my experience and how I would like to do it. Well, actually, it's not about that. So answering this question will lead me to what we call PR checklist. And this is really very important. Prior any code review process, as reviewer and author, we should agree on a few things. And this checklist can contain, for example, Always before submitting any pull request as an author, I should make sure that I provide all the unit tests and my code pass all those tests. My new code doesn't break any existing test. I should make sure that all the dependencies are provided. I should make sure that 
the, um, the 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 style the the formatting of my new code is aligning with the overall uh, syntax and format of the project there are tools that can help me doing that so for example in python there is PyLint, there is Black, there is the Flake 8. Those tools can automatically detect if there are some issues in the format and the code styling. So I don't waste my time doing those uh, tasks. I should make sure that there are no code smells and there are no security holes. And there are also tools can help me doing that. For example, there is Sonar Cube can do uh, code analysis and this will help me to detect those holes in my code or code smells and I let those tools do the job for me. So this list can get long. I will insist on the fact there is no one fits all PR checklist. However, we can adapt this checklist based on the company, based on the project, based on the team. But this is very important that we define prior any code review process. And then the author will respect that checklist before submitting the pull request. And me as a reviewer, I know what I'm supposed to look at. The last question is how can I do an efficient code review process? Well, first of all, automate everything you can do and focus your effort as a reviewer on things cannot be done by some software or tools, as I explained earlier. For formatting, code style, uh, code smell, there are plenty of tools can do the job for us. So me as a reviewer, I won't waste my time, I might effort in saying, well, this doesn't follow the convention, the name and convention, etc. There are tools can detect those issues and they can do the job for me. Then I let them do that and I focus my effort on the core of the pull request. So this is automation is very important point. Second point. As an, a reviewer, I should answer in a timely fashion way, which means I get this pull request, I will not give you my feedback like in three months. Well, that doesn't make any sense. You are waiting for my feedback. And that really leads me to the point which is about the size of the pull request. Well, if you submit a pull request with the 20 classes, each of them 100 lines of code, then yes, you will not expect a feedback very soon. And that's why we recommend that you should submit really a small pull request, then you will, can, you will get efficient feedback faster and really the, the changes won't be big and then you feel that you wasted your time. Of course, we should make sure that any pull request before submitting is satisfying the PR checklist. That's important. Uh, as a reviewer, I should uh, be concise when I'm writing my reviews and my comments and be clear. Last but not least, any pull request, you have the choice between accepting or rejecting. Me personally, I hate word, I hate word reject because our goal is to ship the code to, to production. So if there are some ambiguity, some points are not clear, you should discuss that with the author. Let's see uh, in more details how can we implement that. So here is the list of do's and not to do for both reviewer and an author. So to not to do, as a reviewer, don't criticize the person and instead focus on the code, try to find issues and bugs in that code and report that to the, to the author. The second point, be kind. When you write your review, don't use harsh language. And here, actually, there has been an empirical study done by Microsoft in 2015. It shows that very negative comments were considered useful only 57% of the time, while the more neutral comments were useful around 80% of the time. So don't be harsh. I don't use harsh language. And instead, always, always assume competence and always provide a context, a context because that will help the reviewer to understand what you are trying to achieve. Let's take a look at this example of a reviewer writing his comment about a pull request where the developer implemented some approach about concurrency. So the reviewer is writing, why are you using this approach? You are adding any complexity. 
Well, this seems a bit harsh. And instead of that, and it's recommended to, recommended to format it that way, this concurrency model appear to be adding complexity to the system without any visible performance benefit. If you can see the difference between two reviews, the first one, you are focusing in the person. So you are criticizing the person. You've done that, you implemented that way. So this is not good and this is not acceptable. The second one, you are really criticizing the code and the model itself. So it should be written that way. Well, I reached the end of my talk. So for those who felt asleep, I guess nobody felt asleep. All of you look, seem focused to me, I guess. <laughs> so this is the most important slide, takeaway. The goal from code review is to ship the code to production. And it's not about pro uh, proving how smart we are. It's really about shipping the code to production. Focus on automation. Let your effort uh, focus on the core of the pull request. So human review should be doing what cannot be automated. As we said, the format, the code style, the code smell can be done by many tools. So just benefit from those tools and focus your effort in the core of the pull request. Be kind, respectful reviews will lead to useful reviews. And last but not least, the golden rule, your code doesn't represent who you are. Any criticizing, criticism of your code doesn't mean that we are criticizing you. Well, here's the list of references I have used to prepare this talk. And it has been great to give this talk and share those insights with you. I hope that you benefit from it. Thanks for your time and thanks for your presence. Any questions? Any comments? You you gonna apply it in your company? I, I, I can talk. I'm, I'm a little shy guy. Yes. Okay, thank you for sharing. That's great to hear. Thank you very much. Other questions, comment? I hope you can apply that in your company, in your team. Sometimes it seems it's obvious, but actually the implementation is not easy. And I've been through that. But you remember the golden rule, right? The gold rule. Your code doesn't represent who you are. All right. Okay, great. Yes, thank you.